From Ute to Utah by Moment Johnson On a mountain covered in snow, a ski lift clanked and moaned. In the pocket of a little girl's pants, a small rock wiggled and danced. The rock bumped and jumped and shook and jerked until it lost its grip and started to slip. Whoosh went the wind as the rock did descend. Crash fell the rock into the cold, deep snow. And from down in a hole it could hear the wind blow, whispers of old minds traveling with the breeze, their song of silver rustling like tree leaves. With the music of a soft lullaby, the rock closed its eyes, it drifted to sleep, and underground railways filled its dreams. The rock awoke to an underwater world, from mountain to lake it somehow was hurled. It saw islands in the distance, and moved through the water without much resistance. It passed by spirits of many different creatures, each with their own magical features. A crocodile with the head of a horse, and a dolphin with jagged teeth, swam through its course. Then up above on the land it saw, indigenous people riding great mammals. Legend says they tamed these beasts and hunted antelope on the sandy beach. From out of the water, the rock was retrieved, then brought to a cave 7,000 feet above sea. An underground world with growing formations, containing odd names like soda straws, drapery, and cave bacon. Hanging on for dear life, up above are stalactites, and creeping up from the ground, reaching high, stalagmites. And when the two join together as one, a column is formed, their journey now done. A special formation exists in this cave, a heart hanging high, representing the brave. A man and woman whose lives had crossed, their love strong, but then quickly lost. Now bound together today in stone, so they will never again be alone. But the rock's new home didn't last long. Carried to a world of mud and sandstone, its journey continued on. Hoodoo spires, mushrooms and goblins, cracks and crevices, caves you could walk in. The longer one looks at these natural structures, the more different shapes the eyes can capture. A sphinx, a totem, a lion's head roaring, a castle, a kingdom, a village full of pilgrims. And just like the clouds, the rocks are always changing, wind, rain and snow, assisting and rearranging. Then in blew a huge storm, the rock's world again transformed. Tumbling down the mountain it rattled, stopping in front of a giant rock castle. Petroglyphs and pictographs seen along the rock's path, remnants of the old Fremont culture, depicting a tale of great wonders. For years they had lived there, not migrating like the rest, till one day they vanished, just disappeared and left. Not much remains of those ancient people, no one knows where they came from or where they went to. Then for five hundred years the land stayed empty, until the Mormons settled there, the Fremont's just a memory. With the kick of a boot, the rock too disappeared, traveling down a new route to a land that's been forming for billions of years. Narrow slot canyons formed by old rivers, buttes, plateaus, domes, and natural bridges. Brilliant cliffs of all different colors, pink, gray, white, red, and many others. Across the sandstone, lines have been swiped, beautiful natural patterns like a zebra stripes, Waves and zigzags, all different shapes, like an abstract painting of a mountain landscape. Many hidden treasures are still here in the desert, dinosaur bones, petrified wood, and other fossils. Arrowheads, spearheads, and the shaman's milky marbles. A kid walked by, noticing the rock, picked it up, and hid it in his sock. The rock decided to take a short nap, then awoke to a journey, traveling by horseback. Through red and white striped cliffs and plentiful sagebrush, it caught a whiff. Lizards and rattlesnakes raced through the sand, and large formations scattered the land. A ballerina's leg kicked up in the air, a gnome with a pointy hat and a thoughtful stare. A twisted rock nodded like a pretzel, and a tower covered in holes like a face full of freckles. When first discovered, they knew this place was special, naming it for its colors and picturesque value. Today it's believed these sandpipes were geysers, long ago hot springs, now solid and much drier. The horse took off, running at a canter, towards the west through many juniper. It stopped above an enormous amphitheater. The rock looked down and saw a great wonder. Rows and rows of colorful hoodoos, shaded like the sunset, glowing against the sky so blue. Orange, yellow, and white striped, like warriors in uniform, getting ready to fight. A story is told of the greedy legend people. They ate up the land, creating an upheaval. The other creatures whined and complained, so in stepped Coyote with a promise to end their pain. He set up a scheme to trick the legend people, offering them a feast inside the canyon walls. When they were all gathered, hungry and gleeful, he turned them into statues, both big and small. The rock tumbled off the horse's back, then rolled down valleys, through crevices and cracks. It landed in a world of bright red towers, full of tunnels, slot canyons, and wildflowers. 
Waterfall spilled down the cliffside, a narrow stream among mountains so wide. The rivers as well are not very plentiful, though once full and raging, able to carve this great spectacle. Today we can see peregrine falcons, mountain lions, turkeys, and plenty reptilians. But mammoths, camels, and giant sloths once roamed this land until hunted off. Now this place is fully protected, a national park frequently visited. The rock continued rolling, its journey kept on going. Pink-colored sandstone became its surrounding, and it slipped between a notch in the mountains. Falling into a different reality, a world of coral sand became its locality. Huge dunes resembling ocean waves, ridden on ATVs by the adventurous and brave. Not much can survive in the sandy land, just some native insects and hardy plants. It's important to remember to protect their existence so we all can enjoy in this great experience. A jeep drove by the rock in the sand, kicked it up, and inside it did land. It drove down the road with boat in tow, headed to the lake, the going slow. Then into the water the boat took off, the rock caught a ride, and the lake they crossed. Past mesas, plateaus, cliffs, and buttes, huge rock structures all along their route. This amazing place was made by man through flooding and the creation of the Glen Canyon Dam. The idea was to provide plenty of water to dry places like Arizona, Nevada, and California. But sometimes with progress other things are lost. Lies of native fish and desert streams were the cost. Sacred sites where the Navajo would worship are now buried under water, unable to flourish. On down the lake, boat and rock traveled, turning into a side canyon with formations that dazzled. The driver pulled over the vessel to dock it. The rock got jostled and fell in his pocket. Then off they went down the trail in search of a rainbow on a great scale. Passing dried up rivers and natural springs, soon they came upon a marvelous thing. A great stone bridge with a history so rich, a sacred site of the Navajo where they have worshipped since long ago. Two rainbow people came together in union, now frozen in time to protect their communion, and to show respect we must never walk under this natural structure of a brilliant orange color. The man bent over, the rock fell to the ground, it sat and waited until finally found, by a young boy on a quest with his grandfather, now at the bridge, but their journey continuing farther. Further east, boy and man traveled until coming upon old ruins with many great towers. No one knows of their exact purpose, perhaps they were observatories or for storage of excess, maybe even homes or for structures of defense, but no one really knows, these are all just guesses. After exploring the ruins, they went up north, with rock still in tow, they continued forth, coming to an area of deep river gorges and bordering a park named after horses, canyons carved by the Colorado River with rugged twisty roads that will deliver, a person all over this diverse land to witness history in the making firsthand. Striped pinnacles in the Needles District, an amazing view of the island in the sky, a maze of canyons and rivers so intricate, a rock gallery of life-size petroglyphs. The stars depicted in some rock drawings, specific alignment of ancient buildings, constellations included in the design of old pottery, makes it easy to believe these archaic people found importance in astronomy. The kid threw the rock, as they often do, then zing into the air it flew, till splash into the water it sank, drifting along until hitting the river bank. It found itself in a new place, a crossroads, the gateway, a perfect home base, a central location for great adventures, a place to find marvelous treasures. The world awaits you in whatever your heart desires, a playground for hikers, bikers, and daring rock climbers, a wonderland for photographers who can never truly capture, an amusement park for four-wheelers, base jumpers, and whitewater rafters. Today this town is often in magazines, you can read about it or see it on TV. Even in the past, they had the old Spanish trail used by trappers and traders on a great scale. As the sun set and the moon began to rise, the rock was pulled away from the riverside. A kangaroo rat had it in its grasp, dragging the rock through the tall grass. In time, they reached an arch so delicate, the most famous of all those in residence. But they didn't stop there. There was so much to see. Over 2,000 arches filled this area with beauty. It took millions of years for this land to form. It once was a dry seabed, but then transformed. The red rock and sandstone buried underneath began to change. It warped and creased. Then that land began to rise. It began to crack and fill with ice. The ice expanded and broke the rock, leaving behind many arches in a condensed spot. Up on top of a cliff, the kangaroo rat lost its grip. The rock tumbled down the mountainside, falling into the pack of an archaeological guide. 
The woman took them to the border of Colorado, to a place full of history and many dark shadows, maze-like canyons, some just a sliver, were carved by the green and Yampa rivers. Here you can find traces of dinosaurs, from footprints to dino dung and bones galore. Close your eyes and imagine a time when giant creatures roamed the planet at the top of their prime. The guy took a boat tour down the Green River, heading into Colorado, then back to Manila. They passed under a large, arch-shaped bridge, then docked the boat and climbed up to the ridge. From here they traveled until reaching a dam, pulled over and parked, got out of the van. The woman took her pack and dug around, jostled the rock, and it fell to the ground. It rolled down a hill, falling off the cliff, crashed in the water, and set adrift. The sun began to set behind the canyon walls, creating a flaming red glow, shining bright like a fireball. Slowly upstream, the rock was forced by a rather large trout fully submersed. Further along, the river opened up into a wide reservoir surrounded by shrubs. Bighorn sheep were all around, and pronghorn antelope wandered abound. Images of Butch Cassidy danced upon the water, whispering spirits of his wild bunch brothers, stories being told of their adventures in robbery, perhaps some of their gold remains in their old hideout, buried. The trout accidentally swallowed the rock. Worse than that, it swallowed bait on a hook, now caught. The fisherman took it back to his camp, where he gutted it and cooked it by the light of a lamp. In the dark of the night, the rock was forgotten, and a pile of leaves is where it had fallen. Cozy and warm, the rock went to sleep, until awoken by the sun to a kaleidoscope of dreams. Surrounded by mountains with tall pine trees, yellow aspens, red oaks, and bright orange leaves, an array of colors shone from the sky and land like a fireworks display at the MGM Grand. The rock lay back, bathing in the sun, enjoying the colors of autumn, winter soon to come. It noticed the woman along the path of leaves. It thought it recognized her, but no, it couldn't be. She seemed to notice it as well, and whispered, This looks like my old rock that fell. Down off the ski lift when I was a girl, the lift had shook, and down it hurled. She picked it up for a better view, thought they looked the same, only this one more colorful than new. But things do change over time. She herself had grown up and learned to shine. She brought the rock home to remind her of change, of her youth and her growth, that nothing stays the same. The rock was happy to have a new home, to be back with its friend, no longer alone. She polished it up until it shone bright. The rock stood proud with all its might. Finally, she pasted it on the mantle center so it would be enjoyed by all those who entered. You can purchase this book from U to Utah at www.amazon.com. To find out more about Moman Johnson's books, please visit www.losttruthpress.com.